Talks Live. Let's welcome in our panel. First, joining us via Skype, columnist for the Fiscal Times, the inimitable Liz Peek. And there she is from New York City. Also with us via Skype, former chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Pete Hoekstra. Pete joins us from the Trump headquarters in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And we should note that my old congressional colleague is currently a Shulman Senior Fellow for the Investigative Project on Terrorism, in addition to being the author of the book, Architects of Disaster, the Destruction of Libya. Uh, we really appreciate both you all making time here for America Talks Live. And it was kind of a curious thing going on today. We expected a huge announcement out of WikiLeaks. Uh, founder Julian Assange, there was this kind of video press conference, and he is saying his organization will publish a million documents related to November's election Let's listen to what he said first, and I've got a couple of comments and some questions. Are upcoming publications significant in relation to the U.S. election? Yeah, we think they're, we think they're significant. Well, the speculation was, Liz, that, uh, boy, he was going to lay out the goods today. Now, was it just a, 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 something where media hype overtook and tried to fill in the blanks for Julian Assange? I don't know. I mean, uh, obviously, a lot of people who are critical of Hillary Clinton and would like to see more of her personal email trove uh, revealed had, were hoping that we would learn more about that, more about the foundation, things of that sort, which have basically been pretty well covered up by the Clinton camp. Uh, I don't know what he's up to. There was all this dancing around yesterday about changing the venue for this revelation, et cetera. I can't imagine that they don't have a lot of emails to and from Hillary Clinton that might be interesting, including possibly some of those which involve President Obama. That's sort of the last shoe to drop here uh, in this whole email scandal. We know that he did email her with a, diff with a sort of incognito address on her server. Uh, we haven't really seen much of that communication, but obviously that would be terribly interesting to see. Yeah, Pete, I don't know what you're hearing from your intelligence sources, but reports we saw this morning included Hillary, what, at a cabinet meeting, asking about uh, using a drone against a Julian Assange, and uh, people thought initially she was joking, but she went on about this in serious fashion. Your take on all that, is that why he pulled his punches today? Oh, I'm not sure. No, I don't think it was because uh, Hillary Clinton is questioning whether he can or cannot be targeted by a drone strike. Uh, you know, it's kind of interesting, the stuff that may be going on in a cabinet meeting. Also interesting what maybe uh, WikiLeaks has that they may or may not release. But the bottom line is the Trump campaign has to be focused on the issues. Uh, if anything comes out of WikiLeaks, so be it. But don't plan on it. Uh, plan on winning this campaign on, on a campaign of change and the type of things that Donald Trump is going to bring to America. That's what we need to be focused on and what he needs to be focused on right now. Let's go to our phones at 1-877-NEWSMAX, 1-877-639-7629. To Silver Springs, Maryland. That's where Dolores is standing by. Hi, Dolores. Hi. Welcome to the program. What's on your mind? <clears throat> well, um... I see you guys every night, um, and I thank God for something new and fresh. I'm an artist by trade, and I'm also a, a Christian. And, you know, people always ask me, well, what do you think about, you know, Hillary and all that, those things that she's done that a lot of people who are voting for her seriously have no idea. Some of them don't even care. But the things that I, you know, being a Christian, I read a lot of scripture. And whatever Hillary has done, and like I said, it, she's done some things that she, you know, is trying to think she's pulling the wool over everybody's eyes. But there's a scripture in Galatians that says, uh, I think it's um, 6, 7. It says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. It says, whatsoever a man soweth, that will he also reap. And you know, so Dolores, as you, as you mentioned this, I think about another uh, scripture, by your fruits you shall know them. <laughs> and and there, there is a situation where there is a record there. And so uh, I hear exactly what you're saying. You got to take this very seriously. And you, like a lot of people, are praying and thinking and seeking guidance uh, from a non-earthly source dealing with the election. We appreciate the call, Dolores, and we hope you'll join us again. 
to the point that uh, we still have the power in this country, Liz, to determine who our next leader will be, expressing it with the vote. And it was very interesting to listen to Dolores there say that some of her friends, they really weren't paying close attention, yet they were going to go vote. Now, we look at Hillary's numbers and the level of distrust is, is huge. We have to point out the same thing for Mr. Trump. But for these late deciding voters or casual voters, can they conceivably make the difference for Hillary Clinton? Oh, I think they are going to make the difference. The race is pretty close. And uh, depending on what poll you look at, anywhere between 10 and 17 percent of the voters are still undecided, which is actually kind of astonishing to me. But I think going back to what you were just talking about, one of the real tragedies here is indeed that the confidence people have in our system of government, in our institutions, has been on a steady slide for about the last 10 years. And I honestly cannot imagine anything worse than a Hillary Clinton presidency uh, contributing to that de demoralization, if you will, of our body politic. I mean, you know, as you point out, 11% of Americans think this woman is honest, and yet half of them seem ready to vote for her. It's, it's an astonishing thing. And you know and the other thing, Liz, that's going on, she's getting a lot of help from the so-called mainstream media. Uh, Pete, a, a case in point yesterday, there was Donald Trump doing a town hall for veterans. CNN and some other media outlets uh, picked this up and just gave it the worst possible interpretation. Let's listen to what Mr. Trump said, and then, Pete, we'll get your reaction. When you talk about the mental health problems, when people come back from war and combat and they see things that uh, maybe a lot of the folks in this room have seen many times over, and you're strong and you can handle it, but a lot of people can't handle it. And they see horror stories. They see events that you couldn't see in a movie. Nobody would believe it. And so CNN and other uh, leftist media outlets took that and uh, were saying that, that Trump was being disrespectful of uh, people suffering from post-traumatic stress. And, of course, Joe Biden got in on the act. Watch Biden here. Where in the hell is he from? So you get that. Colonel North has jumped to Trump's defense. Pete, I'm just interested in your perspective on all of this and how the media is becoming so partisan and so anti-Trump. The media is not uh, only partisan. They're now writing fiction. J.D., I was at that meeting, uh, and we were talking about the care or the lack of care that our veterans are receiving from the Veterans Administration today. 22 vets per day are committing suicide. Uh, the media is awful. It's disgusting what they're doing. They, after a speech by Mr. Trump, they go back into their spin room, and what they decide to do is how can we take this and turn it into a negative article? And shame on Joe Biden. I wish he'd show the same passion for reforming the VA that he is, that he's demonstrating for Mr. Trump, where comments are taken out of context. They are twisted, and it's negative. Mr. The Vice President was totally uninformed, shows no passion for reforming the VA and taking care of our, or taking care of our vets. There were 250 vets there yesterday. If Mr. Trump had said anything disrespectful about our veterans, they would have booed him out of the room. Instead, of, they applauded him because he said, and he laid out a plan to fix the VA uh, rather than jumping to all this other stuff that uh, our vice president. Shame on our vice president. You know, Mr. Biden, take the last three months in office that you have and go do something about the VA Fair before enough. you start. Hey, listen, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, Liz, yeah, we know you have to leave us. Pete, we're going to bring you back to talk more. Thanks to you both. More of your calls and comments as we continue. Stay with us.